I have no idea what the next clip is. So let's just go there. And I got to keep an eye on the time because I'm doing volunteer training at five. So Eugene Gu, who is this Stanford trained doctor and of course was a, a big push. Uh, he was a big pusher of sort of COVID lockdown, very woke guy. He tweeted this out the other day. And I thought that this is, this is so indicative of how so much of the left thinks because it is mainstream left-wing thought at this point. He tweeted out, black on Asian crimes only occur because of our system of white supremacy that strips African-Americans of their economic opportunities while taking respect and dignity away from Asian-Americans. Okay, got my, uh, sorry, I'm doing my contouring, but now I look crazy. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, this whole thing with, with um, how if black people um, commit violence against Asians, that's also white supremacy, which, which, which makes absolutely no sense to me. And, you know, it's the great white savior thing. I mean, I hear that and perhaps I'm more sensitive to it because this happens with women as well. It's like you're robbing black people of their agency. And I, as a woman, see some things, you know, in laws or excuses that are made for women. And I'm like, you're robbing women of their agency, like like they're morally handicapped or something. And that's just so offensive to me. Um, and to tweet that out, I mean, that's that's just crazy. That's just crazy pants. If somebody commits violence against another person, it's not because of some kind of oppression in another area. I don't even know what to say to that. And also, I really have to break up the Ben Shapiro clips, A, because he talks so fast. He can squeeze a lot of information into short segments. Like, if I play a five-minute clip from Dave, it's nice and easy going. You pay a five minute clip from Ben Shapiro. It's like, you might as well slow it down by 75% or not. I mean, by 25%. Plus YouTube likes to copyright strike. So I have to stop and comment, stop and comment to be sure that it falls under fair use. Also, white people in power are experts at dividing and conquering to stay in power. So presumably he was speaking about this case that we discussed yesterday on the program in New York City where a man beat the living hell out of an Asian woman on the street. And it turns out that this particular man happened to be a black man. Okay, <laughs> now I'm looking really crazy. And I chopped these up and put it on my channel without the context of me putting on my makeup. I'm putting on my makeup, people. Yeah, so if that was the context of that tweet, how would you feel if you, if you were that Asian woman? It's like, you're just made a pawn in this larger narrative. No, the person didn't really beat you up. They beat you up as a symbol of white supremacism. When it, and the funny thing is, when it comes to this whole thing in which there is the narrative of pervasive, over, overweening white privilege, in that whole scenario... It's actually Asians that have greater quote unquote privilege because they actually outperform white people on academic tests, on income earning and things like that in general. So it's just a weird thing, but let's continue. And that, frankly, is not supremely surprising in New York City because, as it turns out, a disproportionate number of people who have been victimizing Asian American people are young black people. So Eugene Gu's solution to this, his explanation of this, is that black people have no agency. Black people are not capable of making decisions, you see. And because black people are not capable of making decisions, all of America's structures must be changed so as to make all outcomes equivalent. I know people are going to disagree with me here. But Ben Shapiro, like, well, maybe you guys won't. I don't know. I, sometimes I anticipate objections that don't exist. Ben Shapiro loves pulling out racial statistics. And I know it's because the left does that too. But I don't agree with anyone doing it. And I don't find it particularly helpful to 
try to say, well, the majority of this or that is committed by this or that. Unless you know, there's very rare exceptions. Like if there's a murderer on the loose that's a serial killer, I yeah, it's relevant that most serial killers are white men just so you can find the guy before they kill someone else. But when you're not talking about like some dire situation where you're trying to apprehend somebody, A, I don't know if that statistic is true. And even if it is true, I don't care. Like I don't find it relevant, the race of people that are assaulting people of another race. I just don't. So, you know, I don't know. That just left a bad taste in my mouth where he was trying to say, that most crimes against Asians are by young black people. I, I don't know. He brings things like that up a lot and I don't like it. Oh, sorry. I have my buttons over here now. And Fancy. that frankly is not supremely surprising in New York City because as it turns out, a disproportionate number of people who have been victimizing Asian American people are young black people. So Eugene Gu's solution to this, his explanation of this is that black people have no agency. Black people are not capable of making decisions, you see. And because black people are not capable of making decisions, all of America's structures must be changed so as to make all outcomes equivalent. I don't know this person he's quoting, so I don't know if he's giving a good representation of it, but it certainly seems to be so within the context of a tweet. Um, I mean, you can't deny that environmental factors do affect decision-making and behavior, but this get out of violence free card of, well, no matter what, it's white people's fault is not healthy for anybody. And it's going to backfire. Like you can only... For the same reason that I'm not comfortable with saying, oh, most Asian, you know, crimes against Asians are committed by black people. I'm also not comfortable with any kind of vilification of any group of people. I find that people tend to live up to this to the expectations you have for them. And if you expect white people to be racist, you're going to get more racist white people. If you expect black people to be violent, you're going to get more violent black people. I believe you should think the no the noblest of people. And then oftentimes people will rise to meet that expectation because they like the visions of themselves that they see in your eyes. I mean, we know this for raising children. I mean, it's a it's a basic it's a basic tenet of how to win friends and influence people and how to motivate people. That's what leaders do. Right. Equal rights no, no longer matter. We're going to have to make decisions for you. We're going to have to be paternalistic. We're going to make decisions for you so that your outcome is equivalent to everybody else's outcome. And if you do something wrong, we're simply going to relieve you of the responsibility. This sounds like David Duke, except in reverse. Right? David Duke says that black people have no agency because black people are inferior. The wokists say black people have no agency because black people are inferior because white people have made them inferior. How about this? Black people aren't inferior. How about black people are just the same as every other individuals in American life. They're just as responsible for their own individual decisions. They are just as capable of success. They're just as capable, as it turns out, of not beating up Asian Americans on the street. And thus, if an individual person beats up an Asian American, no matter the race, that person should be held fully responsible for their level of hatred. Yeah, I, that I thought was a good summary. Um, it is funny that the inf inf infantilization sometimes enunciation, I'm going to tell you a funny joke about enunciation, um, of minorities and women by the left is just like you would expect from like actual sexists and racists. Now, here's the funny joke. Um, I was with some friends and they were talking about some, some musicians, friends of theirs, and... Um, or was it a joke? No, I think later on. No, never mind. I'm going to tell you the joke, but like this has happened multiple times in my life. No, this lady was telling a joke about a musician because we were in the middle of talking about musicians. And she said a pianist was walking through the park. And I said, we all looked at her like, what? <laughs> and her husband goes, enunciation, dear, enunciation, because <laughs> you know what we thought she said. <sighs> so if you ever say pianist. Make sure you go pianist, you know, 
enunciate, dear. Enunciate. Yeah, I've got the humor of a sophomore boy. Continuing. And by the way, his entire argument, Eugene Gu here, that black on Asian crimes only occur because of white supremacy is utterly insane. On its face, it's crazy. It turns out that the man who is busted now for the attack on this Asian American woman is named Brandon Elliott. He is 38. And as it turns out, he was arrested in 2002 for the murder of his own mother in the Bronx. Yeah, isn't that interesting? You know, so was that white supremacy too? This was just a bastard. This was just a violent, bad person. And how the hell was he out of jail? He murdered his mother? You know, matricide is pretty harsh, man. Like... I don't get it. And I'm wondering if I lost my signal because I haven't had any comments and not surprising because all this culture war stuff, usually uh, David Davis says that's the Democratic Party shtick to view themselves as a parent and people as children. Yeah, I say um, progressivism is eternal childhood. It's it's you 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 never leave the womb. You're in the womb to the tomb. Can, let me remove that and continue. Now, I have to say this for all the people who are only going to watch 10 seconds of the video and go straight to my comments and call. Okay, I want to stop this. I think we're still on the, the racist stuff. Um, okay, now I want to introduce these clips we have coming up. I believe it's still talking about the Asian violence thing. This guy's channel is called Ruined Leon. I love him. He calls himself the sexiest black man on the internet. And he looks like Will Smith to me. And Will Smith is just gorgeous. So yes, okay, Leon, you are the sexiest black man on the internet. And I love you. I've been binging your content um, because he's he's got his head on his shoulders. I It's a great channel, but now let's continue because I figured a lot of you might not be familiar with him and I've been playing him a lot. A grifter or a pick me or a white supremacist or someone who likes sucking white people's dick But if you enjoy hate crimes if you enjoy committing hate crimes if you enjoy making excuses for people committing hate crimes Go fuck yourself no matter the gender the race ethnicity No matter what you feel inside no matter if you're having a good or a bad day if you are going around Committing violent acts participating in violent acts or making excuses so that the person committing the violent act can get away with it Go fuck yourself right now in the ass because you are the worst type of human being <laughs> with with a barb dildo i would say absolutely agree with him couldn't have said it better myself you're a man after my own heart um i think we share the same spirit animal i think i took these clips out of order though because i think that was the conclusion to a whole shtick that he gave so let's do the next clip they might be out of order for some reason, there are individuals who will take situations and just throw it at white people and make it a white person's problem. Make it the reason why situations are happening is because of white people. And one of these individuals, Eugene Gu, is going around claiming that if black individuals are attacking the Asian community, it's obviously because of those evil, pasty white people who have better lives than them. I'm gonna be completely honest, the tweet Eugene put out before his initial claim of white supremacy was actually a really wise tweet and something that we all need to consider. Hate crimes against Asian Americans have been going on for generations. The media only cares about it now because it's trending. But what happens when the fashion changes and they move on to the next topic? Will that mean all hate crimes just disappear? So disingenuous. Yes, I agree with that. The media does like to talk about things only when they're trending. Okay, yeah, that's that's so true. Do you think the media is really all hot and bothered about Asian, you know, crimes against Asians. You know, in these communities when the Black Lives Matter riots were going on, you know, a lot of those small business owners were Asians. Because, you know, the industrious culture and a lot of Asians are small business owners of so those small groceries and small liquor stores. You didn't see them crying their hearts out for the Asians then, did you? It's, you know, they're, they're, as I said, if I was that Asian woman, I would feel like a pawn, not an actual person who got assaulted and had their rights violated. I was a symbol. I was a pawn. It's like, go, mm, I'm trying to stop cussing. Um, so, okay. That's why I let Leon cuss for me. Continuing. 
Black on Asian crimes only occur because of our system of white supremacy that strips African Americans of their economic opportunities while taking respect and dignity away from Asian Americans. Also, white people in power are experts at dividing and conquering to stay in power. It's interesting how he's sitting there saying people are using their power to divide people and conquer over others while he's actively dividing people. He's dividing white people, he's dividing black people, and he's dividing Asian people. How are you going to sit there and claim that black people, their reason for attacking another human being who also has a right to exist on this earth, their reason for attacking them is because of the random white dude who's more successful than them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that is, that, that is so true, is that in the name of curing division, a lot of these people are creating division. Like, you keep using that word, unity. I do not think you know what it means, or I do not think it means what you think it means. You know, you killed my father, prepare to die. Uh, it, it, it's absolutely crazy. And the, and, and, and the thing is, I used to hear in the past, and I can't cite any sources for it because, like, I don't keep a logbook of these things, but I remember hearing in the past that there was a lot of resentment in the black community against the Asian community because they were more successful. So now it's not that the Asians themselves are successful, which many of them are much more successful than your average, you know, white bread person, you know, definitely than the, the your average like trailer white trash person. And I used to live in a trailer. That's just a you know, if you lived in a trailer, God bless you. Or if you live in a trailer, God bless you. You're probably saving a whole lot more money than I'd am right now but you know what I'm talking about I'm talking about the stereotypes and yeah but now it's white people's fault everything everything I guess is 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 white people's fault I wouldn't you know I totally respect Leon because you know it could there are people who use this narrative who don't believe it and are using it to their benefit just like there's women who use the sexism narrative and they don't actually believe it i'm not saying nobody believes it but there are women who don't believe it that use it because it benefits them they're like hey if i can if i can it, it, it's it's the type of ev evil women that um fake rape allegations there's not very many of them but you're lying to yourself if you think it doesn't happen or like that lady on the videotape where you know she wasn't getting her way in her marriage and she started punching herself in the face and then was going to claim her husband did it. Yeah, that. Well, and it's the same type of people who fake hate crimes to try to get some kind of clout or advantage or glory for themselves. I mean, that's just human nature. If you give people an opportunity to exploit and lie and swindle, the liars and swindlers are going to take advantage of it. And this guy with that tweet where he talks about white people being experts at keeping themselves in power, you want to know who is an expert at using race issues to keep themselves in money and power? People like Al Sharpton. Anyone can do that. In fact, maybe this guy in the tweet is. I don't know enough about him to say, but it's starting to look that way to me. There is no amount of white supremacy in the world that should inspire anyone else to attack another human being. That shit is weird, that shit is disrespectful, and it's abhorrent for somebody who is apparently a doctor to spout this type of nonsense. Yep, absolutely agree. Just, you know, and just for the women who might be interested, I've just started doing like because I have very, very hooded eyes. My eyeliner like with black eyeshadow instead. And it's not really, it's like faux eyeliner. So if you see how I'm like doing it in the corners here, it's like gives the illusion of a wing. So let me just get this side going here. And you got to use these guides like I'm using. I mean, I have both hooded and downturned eyes, which is a double whammy. And I've always had them. Of course, they get worse with age. But hooded eyes and downturned eyes aren't an age thing. I mean, you could develop them with age when you didn't have them before. But it's also just a type of eye shape. All 
I'm going to blend this so don't be alarmed that's not blended yet. I know it looks funky without it being blended. Not that the guys were alarmed, but I don't know, maybe you are. The biggest booty gurus are um, men. Jeffree Star, James Charles, and boy, is there some drama going on with that right now. James Charles can't seem to stop sending instant messages to minors. Once you got in trouble for that once, do you think you'd learn? Don't get it. I don't get it at all. Okay, we're going to go to the next clip in a minute, but I'm just p p I'm trying to find a good blending. This is a good blending brush, I think. Okay. In a democracy, the people rule. If voters want something done over time, it happens. That's what self-government is. But what do you call a system in which all the major, all the really important decisions are made by big companies without any reference at all to what voters want? Okay, that was just a really short clip because I like pointing out Tucker Carlson's hypocrisy or cognitive dissonance. Really, what voters, who, who, who are these voters you speak of? Is it you mean the majority? And so if the majority decide they want something, but the 49% don't want it, that's somehow self-government. Certainly not self-government for those who are getting forced by the rest. Like I used to spout these platitudes too and didn't see the inherent contradiction. So I like pointing it out. So I don't think he's being illogical or internally inconsistent on purpose. I think we're like brainwashed into it. And that when you step back and think about it, you're like, like, let me tell you a story. Like I was dealing with a progressive friend of mine arguing about whether or not taxation was theft. And to me, that's just like obvious now. And, you know, he, he was arguing that it wasn't. And I said, but I don't want to pay it. I don't want to. And then he like, I go, so what happens if I refuse? And he, he kind of like had to step back. I mean, I was like, I don't consent. You know, when talking with leftists, really the consent issue does bear fruit because they really respect consent or at least pay lip service to it. Um, the politicians don't, but your average everyday leftist does. So focus on the consent issue. And I found it's very effective. Like, it does make them think. Okay, I'm just brightening up the eyelid corner here a little bit. And I am still going to put some eyeliner on, but I don't have to put as much when I use the black eyeshadow. Okay, next. What is Ben Shapiro's favorite song? I said certified freak. Seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pull out game weak. Yeah, 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 yeah. You effin' with some wet ass P word. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. Give me everything you've got for this wet ass P word. Uh, I just did that as a joke because I think it's funny. I, I, I'm surprised he even asked that question on air. What's his favorite song? Because he's still the laughing stock of the internet for that. Okay, got the eyeliner on there. I'll do the other eye in a minute. I've got another one where he's asking a question. Is Ben Shapiro libertarian? So when it comes to the role of government, I'm generally libertarian. When it comes to the role of social structures, I'm a conservative. Right, so I, I don't think that the job of the government is to cram down my particular social values. I do think that you need a rich and robust social structure that is capable of inculcating those values in a citizenry. And I think that if you had to sort of embody what I believe about government in one quote, it would be the John Adams quote, that the Constitution was written for a moral and religious people and no other, because the Constitution in the absence of a moral and religious people, the people would just rush through the boundaries of the Constitution like a whale through a net. Like a whale through a net? Wouldn't a net catch a whale? I think he meant water through a net. I don't know. I just noticed that weird. I think he screwed that up. Um, no, uh, Ben, I think you are oversimplifying your, your views on government. Unless I misunderstand you. I don't watch, you know, everything that Ben puts out. But I remember when those bathroom laws uh, 
were going into effect. I'm not talking about the bathroom laws mandating the bathroom issue. I'm talking about the bathroom laws. I can't remember. It was a Southern state where they were trying to outlaw private businesses having, you know, not, you know, what's the way to put it? Being absolutely fine with transgender people using the bathroom of their identified gender. And I don't remember him condemning state action for that. So on some things, he's somewhat libertarian. But then again, the word libertarian, kind of like the words radical and moderate, has so many meanings. Um, I don't think he's a political libertarian because he is fine with the state doing certain things. He might be less fine than other Republicans, but I wouldn't call him libertarian, certainly not a social libertarian. And when it comes to libertarianism, just as a worldview philosophy, it gets much more muddier. Some people would say that you have to be very personally liberal to be a libertarian. And a lot of people in the libertarian party think that. Uh, I don't believe that's true. I believe you can be very, very socially conservative and be a libertarian. I don't happen to be socially conservative. And I do agree with him in the abstract that you have to have a society that will uphold freedom or you have to have a society that will uphold good morals. He and I would probably disagree on what some of those good morals are. And I don't think religion is required for it, even though I am a religious person myself. Okay, continuing. Final note, the evidence is additionally coming out in the George Floyd case. And as it turns out, there's pretty powerful evidence, according to Andy McCarthy at National Review, that George Floyd resisted arrest. There's also a fair bit of evidence that one of the other people in the car with George Floyd may have been his drug dealer. So the defense is starting to put up its case. Watch over the course of the next week as the media attempt to elide the case completely. They will cover the prosecution. They will not cover the defense. You will not know. The jurors are hearing a pretty shaded version of what happened that day. So that if Derek Chauvin is acquitted, it will be blamed on American racism rather than on the very complicated fact patterns of this particular case. There isn't a complicated fact pattern, Ben. Kiss my ass. Who cares? I don't care. Oh, my nose is dripping a little. I don't care if he resisted arrest. That's not a capital offense. I don't care. I don't care if his drug dealer was in the car. What does that have to do with anything? The guy used drugs. whoop de do. I don't care. That does not justify what happened to him. Ben didn't give any, like, mitigation there. There's no mitigation. You don't get to kill somebody if they resisted arrest. You don't get to say that life is not worth as much or it's justified to use more force against him because his drug dealer might have been in the car. I don't care. And Ben has just completely misrepresented this whole thing from the beginning. I've done a whole show on it um, called Don't Cry For Me, Ben Shapiro. Um, the facts on the George Floyd case don't care about your feelings. I would highly encourage you to go watch that. He really, really angers me with this. You gotta take what you're given, that's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians and choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business. Not because they want to...